Welcome to this video in which we will have a look at, at how to isolate compromised workloads using Cisco ACI. And we will do it in one of two ways. First, either inserting additional security in the form of traffic inspection. And secondly, if a server got compromised because an attack went through, through micro segmentation, we will be able to isolate that server, put it in, a, in quarantine so that it's not able to do any damage. To that purpose, we will, be, we will use a, an example two-tier application with a web tier and a database tier. Let's have a look how this application has been modeled in Cisco ACI. So as you can see, we have um, an endpoint group representing external workloads, and we have then uh, quarantine and tier one. We will have a look at the quarantine EPG later. Uh, the external uh, clients are allowed to speak to the web servers, but they are not allowed to speak to the database servers. And as you could see, there are some specific ports that have been opened and only those ports are active. There's this quarantine EPG that we will uh, use later to put compromised web servers in. And tier one servers, that is web servers, are allowed to speak to databases. Again, external clients are not allowed to speak directly to data databases. And as you could see, there is no um, firewall inserted there. So let's first, let's have a look at, at how ACI is blocking ports. So as you could see, uh, as you might have seen, there are only a couple of ports opened. Uh, first, let's check that we have IP connectivity to the application. And now let's use Nmap to do a basic port scan. So it will just take a couple of seconds and uh, Nmap will tell us the ports that are opened. Let's see, there you go. So uh, it's uh, a couple of ports are, are open, as you can see, and FTP is not in the list. Let's uh, verify that. Let's try to connect over FTP to the application. It's not going to work because ACI is, is blocking that. Um, it, in order maybe to, to double check, we can go to uh, the server, to the application, and and, and check that FTP is actually installed and working. Yeah, so as you could see, it was the network blocking the access, not the server itself. Right, so um, we have that. Uh, as, as, as you can see, the, the reason why it was blocked is again, because uh, FTP is not in the list of ports that ACI allows to go through from uh, clients to web servers. Now, um, the question is, is this enough? Is layer four security enough? So um, we have this web application, as we could see, we have secured the access, but only port 80 is allowed or port 443. You can see the application is working. This is a basic application that returns telephone numbers when you enter a name. However, let's uh, try to use an application level attack and see whether it works. In this case, we will try with SQL code injection and we'll try not to get one telephone number, but all of them. This shouldn't work, but actually it does. And it's, it's uh, an application vulnerability, which um, probably the, the application coder didn't think about when he was writing the application. So how to prevent this? We already saw in previous videos that uh, application security is required for that. And ACI is offering a very easy way to insert. Um, um, application security here. So we are using here an example of a self-service portal that will insert a front-end firewall in front of the web servers. In this case, we are inserting an ASA firewall uh, which has source fire functionality in embedded. So it's both a uh, firewall and a next generation IPS. To see that this worked, we can go to um, the uh, contract, which is called in, in ACI, and see that in the service graph box, there is a firewall now, a front-end firewall there. And you can see the services that are allowed, management, I mean, SSH, and uh, port 80 443. So now let's verify that the application is still working with the front-end firewall. Um, yeah, looks like that. Um, telephone numbers are being returned. And uh, we can now try to redo our SQL code injection attack. But before we do that, we are going to activate some, some logging. 
and we are going to activate clogging in the system that is responsible for the automation. Because in this video, we will see not only how we will block the attacks, but uh, how we will take some actions upon those attacks. Right? Let's go. Let's launch the SQL code injection attack and see what happens. So, submit. You can see nothing is being returned. So the foul is blocking the attack. So far, so good. But are we doing something else here? And uh, the answer is yes. If we are having a look at the log, then we are seeing that um, for our automation system, we are seeing that the attack was detected. Um, There's some information that uh, SourceFire relayed uh, here. And uh, the, the, the following command was run. This is actually a Python script that will insert the backend file. So what's the logic here? Um, SourceFire detected the addition, the, the attack on the web here. And upon that, um, it was decided to insert additional security in the application. In this case, an additional firewall between the web tier and the database tier, which is, again, uh, an ASA firewall and an IPS with IPS functionality, which actually are two contexts in the same physical firewall. And as you can see here, we are uh, uh, the contract is reflecting that. This is how contracts look like in, in ACI. This is a firewall between a, a source and a destination or a consumer and a provider. Right, so um, if we go back, uh, oh, and, and this is a web server, a load balancer that we are doing to load balance, load across two both servers, two web servers, and uh, you could see that both are up and running. All right, so uh, now we can verify that the application is still up and running. As you can see, the, uh, the, the um, additional firewall is there between web and database. So the application, again, seems to be working. Of course, SQL code injection is not going to work here because now we have not only one, but, but two firewalls in the way. Um, but um, yeah, now uh, let's be paranoid and assume that even if we blocked all uh, attacks we are aware of, like for example, SQL code injection, somehow a hacker was able to get into our web uh, servers and compromise them and eventually launch some attack towards our database servers, maybe some recognition attacks, maybe some uh, meta exploit based attacks in order to gain control of the web server. So now not only we are able to see that, but we will try and we will try to isolate the compromised server. We are looking at our log system here. And uh, there you go, there is an additional entry here. Uh, and, and this time it's not a SQL code injection attack, but a SQL, a, My, a, a MySQL server attack. So now it's not only about, oh, somebody's trying to attack us, but about somebody has compromised the web server and they're attacking the database. So now, uh, what the system did is setting a custom attribute in vSphere. You can see attack equals true. And this triggered a chain of actions that put the web server in quarantine, the compromised web server in quarantine. This was the IP address from which the attack was launched. Uh, HA proxy uh, removed the server from the web farm. And that's because of ACI dynamic EPG assignment that looked into that custom attribute, attacked equals true and therefore puts the uh, server in, in quarantine. So as you can see here in the EPG, we can find this IP address, which now is isolated. In this case, we still allow um, management ports in order to, to, uh, to clean that server. But this is how ACI is able to isolate compromised servers, no matter whether they're in the same subnets or non, as non-compromised servers, in this case, looking at vSphere custom attributes. I hope this video was useful. Thanks for watching.